this article courtesy of the New York Post about Spotify staff being outraged that Joe Rogan has a podcast on their platform. I just don't understand, man. These stories come out like every other month, it feels like, and it's just tiring, isn't it? Like, imagine working at Spotify and thinking that you have, and being an employee, right? Not being somebody that's on the board or you've got shares and shit, but just being a general employee and generally thinking that you can dictate to your company who they hire and who they work with. Like, it just... What a weird time to be in it. What a weird place to be. You would imagine in most places or in most cases, if your company happened to align itself with somebody that you generally felt like didn't align with your morals or your ethics or your worldview, that you as the employee would be in a position where you could just leave and go somewhere else. You wouldn't be in a position to like lobby or protest your own company. It just seems bizarre, doesn't it? It doesn't seem like you're operating from a real sh- position of strength because more oft- more likely than not they can find somebody else to replace you who just is ambivalent to Verruga in general and just doesn't give a shit um but anyway we continue so as here it says Spotify staff reportedly outraged by Joe Rogan's show so this leg is a text says the following it said Joe Rogan the notoriously uh polarizing let's get this little thing out of the way because I hate it the totally polarizing host of the Joe Rogan experience America's most popular podcast 2020 it's upsetting some Spotify staff as according to a report employee complaints however fall on the deaf ears of company executives who paid the 53 year old comedian more than 100 million um, to secure his stream of the platform allegedly from everything to about the money thing that's mad that as well because he's that's one talent that people don't really give joe too much credit for because there are some points where he does seem a bit detached from reality and he's not really aware of what goes on in the normal world but for somebody that's as wealthy as him he does come across the most normal i've seen of anybody that's rich as this guy because from what we've heard through the grapevine and through people being chatty patties supposedly the deal is worth way more than 100 million right it's way it's worth a a lot more and he was just happy with that news being put out there because he doesn't really care about you know looking like the billy big balls in the press so it's far more than 100 million and imagine right and i'd imagine he's got some sort of guaranteed amount that got deposited to his account and whatnot and the amount that the podcast makes in general outside of sponsors and stuff that he makes on the adsense alone with the clips channel like just just insane amounts right that just come through on that uh, into this guy's account and he seems to be fairly normal right he seemed to be fairly cool fairly well balanced and stuff and again I, I kind of go back to this point here at the top here notoriously polarizing I was like can you be polarizing and be the number one f- person or number one show in your you know in your field is that possible I don't think it is I don't like I think generally most people think his show is good which is why a lot of people listen to it and which is why he commanded the amount he's able to come off from Spotify I don't think you can be super polarizing and be super popular it doesn't work that way you can be popular in a niche and be polarizing but not generally because people that listen to Joe Rogan podcasts are far reaching right I listen to it I've been listening to it for years but I'm sure there are people from all walks of life that listen to it for the guest or for the show or whatever or just to unwind so I'm not really anyway we'll continue the quote says here, I'm personally bothered by the transphobic comments and the concerned with the way he might spread misinformation, said one Spotify employee wrote last fall on an internal networking channel on the app Fishbowl inside a report on Tuesday. So one person is right is raising concerns about Joe and they made a whole article about it. Man, you got bless God bless Joe journalism nowadays, isn't it? Um a former employee told the publication that during his time at Spotify the decision to sign a deal with Rogan was the most contentious one the company made. Uh, yep. However, another employee told an insider that it's the only loud minority of people who are outraged by rogan exactly because it doesn't even seem like it's that controversial if you're spotify and you're trying to launch your podcasting division platform after the first run of shows of like joe budden and um who's that model who's that um who's that plus size model there was a couple of people that that launched at the same time i think it was Hillary clinton or something i don't know who, whoever it was right that was a first run and obviously you garnered some level of attention you got some users some acquiring of um listeners were done on that one but then you want to ramp it up and really go for the juggler especially with apple kind of twiddling their thumbs the best possible person to go get is a joe rogan right because joe rogan you'd imagine him to be more of an apple kind of dude but you know they didn't they didn't kind of wake up and smell the coffee so spotify came in you know put down backed up the brinch truck and got him signed up it seemed like a logical signing to do right and since then loads of other shows have kind of followed suit because i'm sure they saw joe rogan go and then they thought if they can do business with him more likely i'll be okay doing business with them too so i don't really see it as the most um what they say here 
I don't really see it as a controversial appointment personally. It continues. It says, while only a subgroup of staff may be upset, their numbers were sufficient to merit a town hall meeting in September. But still, what's the what's the number of people that have to complain to get a town hall meeting? Let's not go too far there. To address that, um, they felt Jurgen's show was at times anti-transgender, which is mad to say. The Wall Street Journal reported in October, a request by some staffers for the Jurgen experience to receive an editorial supervisor was denied by the company. And Rogan subsequently retweeted a video mocking the employees for being over sensitive which is true imagine trying to get in somebody to oversee editorial supervision of the show it's just nuts the reason why it works is because you get the illusion or you get the idea that somehow the only people kind of booking the show is rogan and whoever else does the booking and J young jamie right there's not like a hundred million staff attached to the show that's what kind of makes it such a good thing to listen to because it's generally a conversation between one guy who's really curious about whoever the guest wants to talk about and another person who wants to talk about something or promote a product they're selling or a book or whatnot so you get some really interesting far-ranging conversation especially when it's kind of open format three-hour conversation sitting down no distractions and stuff like it's that's what makes it special having somebody overseeing it in an editorial sense it's just going to shit it up and the one thing that you know is a perfect recipe for messing up something that's good is getting more people to add on to it like that's the quintessential way a writer's room whenever you start adding more writers more producers more handlers immediately the thing that you're trying to do goes to complete shit the less people the better more focused it continues he is the biggest voice by far that's going um to accelerate our business and employee what your business says um what's in general said to them getting him a spotify and soon exclusively is going to help to bring a lot more audience onto the platform and hopefully we can spread that to other programming yeah imagine because as much money as they gave Joe Rogan, I'd imagine I would like to know how much is an acquisition prior to Joe Rogan joining, right? So maybe they they've actually the ones that have actually made the killer deal because they've basically been able to acquire users at a far less cost than they did prior because they've got Rogan on the platform, right? A lot of people probably signed up to Spotify or simply to listen to the show. But the funny thing is with Spotify, because they're, you know, a pretty shitty company, you pay your flipping Spotify monthly fee and you still get ads that play on the flipping stream when you listen to JRE. It's not that annoying because they're only like 30 seconds and you don't have to wait too long to, for them to pass on by, but you'd imagine paying for Spotify premium that part of the premium experience would be that you don't have to listen to ads but you know whatever it continues to say in the case of rogan a total of 10 meetings have been held with various groups of individuals to hear their respective concerns spotify ceo daniel x said in september meeting vice report at the time and some of them want rogan removed because of the things he has said in the past it ends here in addition to the company staff of rogan infuriated fellow spotify podcast stars including prince harry and megan muggle after telling 21 year old not to get covid 19 vaccine a claim of which he subsequently backpedaled which i wasn't a fan of but again i understand 100 million plus in your account and the future of your family depending on it or the, the legacy on the kind of future of your generations to come i definitely understand making those adjustments but if i did not immediately return the post request to comment so the point to point out here is that funny enough signing the spotify deal as lucrative as it was for joe rogan's bank account has turned into a weird sort of attack vector in it something that musk spoke about something that joe spoke about a few other subsequent times where elon musk was speaking about the fact that he decided to kind of sell all his homes and give away all his worldly possessions so that he could focus on obviously the projects and the companies that he's obviously running but also to limit the amount of attack vectors he gives to the press and to the media because i'd imagine somebody like him who's operating at such a high level you probably probably need as less um opposition or attacks coming your way even though he spends too much time on twitter and social media and he seems like a bit of a fame whore he still doesn't need to have people out there constantly writing hit pieces out about him trying to tear him down because he decided to go on a boat or because he bought a new Rolls Royce or because he's got this weird mansion in the middle of a forest he doesn't need that extra hassle so he decided to strip himself of all those other possessions focus on his family and obviously on his businesses and you know um, Dogecoin and whatnot and it limits the amount of tax but still he's probably one of the most high profile billionaires obviously in the world and he's probably somebody that a lot of people generally don't have a lot of time for so it didn't really help too far but you can only imagine what it would have been like if he would have been like a standard billionaire that gets helicopters and private jets everywhere and is you know going to flip an ib for it would have been insane 
So Joe Rogan signing his Spotify deal as kind of low key and as cool as he is. And generally, like I said, for somebody as wealthy as he is, he seems to be the most normal of people that I've kind of noticed of money. That he doesn't necessarily even talk about it too much. But since he signed that deal, it has turned into a sort of weird poison chalice, poison bank account, whatever it may be, because they don't stop with the attacks. Like It's like every other month, somebody's coming out saying something about him, trying to tear him down, trying to get the show cancelled or whatnot. And it just seems to me like a waste of time because what do these people think is going to happen? Spotify have invested $100 million plus. Again, like I said, people with their ear to the ground that know the business behind the scenes have said it's far more than $100 million. Joe's just happy with that number being put out there because he's not, you know, he doesn't care. Um, if that's the case, why would they drop him at the drop of a hat because some of their employees are upset about the people he has on his show? It doesn't make any sense. It really, really doesn't. They could easily just throttle the show behind the scenes and make it not appear on the algorithms or whatnot. They can do loads of things to prevent it being pushed up. In terms of getting him off their platform, that's not going to happen. Um, and also I'd imagine contractually there are things put in place on both sides to make sure that they're protecting themselves. So if he ever was to get fired, quote unquote, from Spotify, they'd have to pay him um, an exorbitant amount, right, to get him out. And I'm sure he wouldn't go quietly either. It'd be a lot of bad, unnecessary press for them. So, they, you know, you can easily weather the storm of a couple of employees being annoyed that he had some author on that's talking about maybe transgender, um, you know, giving, giving kids, you know, pills and stuff when they're really young isn't maybe a good thing. You, you can maybe weather that storm better than you can weather f firing um, Joe Rogan because of a couple people in your employee staff are upset about the show in general. It just seems a bit strange. But again, like I said, you accept the money and you kind of maintain some editorial control, not all of it, because all those shows that Joe kind of lied, basically, I'm a big fan of him, but he did lie. He did say, oh, we're, we're, we're kind of porting the shows over and, you know, they're going to take time to load and they never came back, right? All the shows, of, I think, with Gavin McGuinness, Milo Yiannopoulos, a couple of Crystal Ear ones, Brian Callum was did the, not, obviously not there in the library. And then he admitted later on in passing that he was happy for them to take them off because he didn't care. But... Apart from that, for the most part, nothing's really changed on the show too tough. There's been a few weird kind of like advertisements that he hasn't necessarily talked about, like the McDonald's thing and some other stuff that he just speaks about too enthusiastically. That doesn't really make any sense. I think one day he was talking about the Lincoln Jeep or something that weird sounded like an ad, but you know, whatever, let him get his money. But in terms of everything else, everything's been fairly, you know, the same so much, so far, so good. But I think one of the costs of signing such a deal and taking the money from such a big company is the fact that you're going to always be the kind of target of some people um, when it comes to cancellations and whatnot. And again, I think he's uncancelable in general because I think the whole point of being uncancelable is sort of mass wealth, which basically allows you not to be run by these organizations that you're signed to. And if you decide to let you go, then you can continue going and doing your show as per normal. But um, yeah, I think these Spotify staff are wasting their time. They should probably focus on just, you know, maybe move into a company that they feel better aligned with their politics or their morals or their ethics. It doesn't make any sense you know picketing your own company you work at because a show on there that you don't like it's just so bizarre it really, really is the strangest thing i never really understood that like maybe people are too attached to their jobs they feel like they can't get another good one but if you generally think the company you're working at is going against everything you stand for just leave like honestly just leave trying to get your organ sacked it seems like the most the biggest waste of time i've ever seen in the history of waste of times but you know again what do i know